been a while now since the Hunger Games wrapped up its series, with the books and films showcasing children mercilessly killing other children under the order of the Capitol. It's crazy stuff, but nothing is as crazy as some of the theories fans have posed about the Hunger Games universe. So today on Beyond the Screen, we're going to be counting down the top 10 dark Hunger Games movie theories. Let's jump in. Coming in at number 10, Prim's death was planned by Coin. Posted to Reddit by a user I can't pronounce, they theorised that Prim's death was planned all along by Coin. I quote, As we all know, in the last few chapters of Mockingjay, Katniss's sister Prim dies. In the rest of the book, everyone is theorising if Prim was killed by President Snow or President Coin. In the end, Katniss comes to the conclusion that Coin was the one. I think that Coin knew that Prim was there, maybe even sent her there herself. Here is the evidence. Number 1. Prim has caused Katniss to be the Mockingjay. Katniss went to the games as a volunteer for Prim. That caused everything that happened, including Coin having to listen to Katniss if she wanted to win the war. Number 2. Coin had planned for Peter to kill Katniss, but before she could do that, Katniss ran away, so killing Prim could have been a punishment for her. And Number 3. When Katniss travelled to the capital, Prim was still at District 13, so when the attack happened, Prim could have been sent there by Coin, who hoped that the attack would kill her. So how was this beneficial for Coin? Well, Coin wanted to make the final Final Hunger Games with the children of the capital, and she knew that if she killed Prim and made it look like Snow did it, Katniss would vote yes. In at number nine, Pan Am is alone in the world. Now, this theory was posted to Reddit by user Will Matron, who said, "We all know the basic Hunger Games story. What we haven't thought about is how isolated Pan Am is. It's more isolated than North Korea in 1984. Maybe there's another reason than just an oppressive government. What if Pan Am is alone in the world? During years before the first rebellion, no country." are mentioned and during the first rebellion, District 13 doesn't seek out help from outside of Pan Am. Also during the 75 years before full on rebellion, District 13 doesn't seek out other countries help. Finally, the two other clues to this are in the epilogue. During the 15 or 20 years after the second rebellion, there's no mention of contact with other countries or a look into the capital secret archives to see if they've kept contact secret. The rest of the world either doesn't have functioning governments or are dictatorships themselves. Coming in at number 8, Shared Universe. Uploaded to Reddit by Bax Terminator, they said, I have a theory. The Truman Show and Hunger Games happen in the same universe. Sounds crazy, but hear me out. In the Truman Show, the public is obsessed with watching Truman. He is a major part of their culture that seemingly everyone watches. And a society that allows such a program may be using it to soothe the masses due to their underlying societal unrest. The show may have been the glue that helped hold them together, but when Truman walked out on the show, that glue was gone. Then the country slowly dissolved into political unrest and a war started. Started. After the war was over, the capital needed a way to better control their new nation and repurpose the Truman Dome to hold the Hunger Games. The society already had a predilection towards unsavory, voyeuristic programming, and now that they had recently been in a brutal war, the Hunger Games was a perfect tool. Coming in at number seven, The Purge. Uploaded to Reddit by Katie Jane. As we know, The Purge is set in a not so distant, slightly dystopian, and highly politically charged future where crime has been made legal for 12 hours, and The Hunger Games is set in a future where America is split into 12 districts and is very much a dystopian country where two citizens are sent from each district to fight to the death for the nation to see. So, her theory goes that the purge was eventually revolted against by the people of America, with the election ultimately splitting the country into divisions that were sorted by class. A compromise was eventually reached that the purge would no longer be a free for all night of crime, and instead an organised competition that would serve as entertainment for the rest of the nation. Coming in at number 6 was Katniss Hijacked. Posted to Reddit by Lightning Fire, they said, In the third book, we're shown the effects of hijacking, using Trackerjack of Venom to alter someone's mind, specifically making Peter try to kill Katniss. Now, as we know, Katniss was stung several times by the Trackerjackers in both the book and the first film. Before the sting, she was trying to decide how she'd be able to kill Peter, and after she saw him with the careers, she didn't think she would have a problem with it. However, after she got stung, she sees Peter. Instead of killing her, he urges her to run and then saves her from Kato. She was still aware enough to process this, but the Venom had already started working. After the stings, she's not sure how she feels or what is real. Then she learns they can both win and instinctively cries out for Peter. Now, ultimately, what they're saying is that Katniss suffered a primitive form of hijacking that altered her mind, causing her to fall in love with Peter. I mean, as someone who really shipped Katniss and Gale, 
I think this is true. Coming in at five, Foxface. Posted to Reddit by Circle Man Fan, they believe that Foxface actually committed suicide. And here's their evidence. I quote It's stated in Catching Fire that in the training station for edible plants, only the plants that are going to be featured in the games are described. Foxface is described and shown as incredibly intelligent. Wouldn't someone this smart know to memorize all of the poisonous plants listed? She knew that her strategy was to not attack. So wouldn't she put priority during training to master survival skills? Foxface knew what would happen if she blatantly committed suicide. It would look like defiance to the capital and her family would be killed. So she decided to end it this way to make sure no one would think she was trying to outsmart anybody. Coming in at number 4, The Mormon Church. This one is really interesting, hear me out. Posted to reddit by Mountain Dude 95 they say, I have a suspicion that Pan Am is a result of the Mormon church taking over the United States government. My first tip off was President Snow. The Mormon church was led by President Snow from 1898 to 1901. They looked very similar, at least in the movies depiction. Old white guys with long beards. The second piece of evidence is the location of the capital, as the Rocky Mountains on the east side of the city, and also sits by a large lake. Evidence is looking good for Salt Lake City, head of the Mormon Empire. The final piece of evidence is the fact that the capital is laid out on a grid, which Salt Lake City is famous for incorporating and perfecting in its city layout. Third, President Coyne's first name is Alma, which was also a character in the Book of Mormon who led a rebellion against the church, which sounds surprisingly similar to how President Coyne leads a rebellion against the capital. Coming in at number 3, The Mockingjay. Now, I saw this theory posted a couple of times online, but I'm going to be focusing on the one uploaded to Reddit by Fame of House wives, who said, A common theme throughout the book is Katniss as a pawn, used by the capital and the resistance as a symbol. Katniss doesn't become this until she volunteers as tribute and is sucked into the game. Their theory is that Katniss was set up to be the Mockingjay way earlier. She was pre-selected and maybe even genetically altered by the scientists in District 13 to be a successful huntress, demonstrate incredible compassion and heroics by the powers that be to ultimately change the world. District 12 was so close to District 13 for the resistance to keep an eye on Katniss and maybe influence the tribute selection to make Prim be selected. Knowing Katniss as well as they did, they knew she would have volunteered as a tribute and get the wheels in motion. In at number 2, it's an analogy for soldiers in America. Posted to reddit by Burn Notice Lover, they said, In the Hunger Games the capital picked children from the community to send to their death, in a lottery process known as the reaping, highly reminiscent of the lottery system used for the Vietnam draft. The new conscripts are given the royal treatment, idolized by the press and congratulated on the sacrifice by the capital. They are given a small amount of training and then are deployed to an unknown land far away from home to kill other young people, much like them, who were sent to die by the old and powerful. Catching Fire is Thank you for your service the book. It's how society treats veterans. The returning veterans are given a hero's welcome and are given heaps of respect and adoration. But their pleas to not let it happen again are ignored. They are treated more as objects of fashion than heroes, and the same society that welcomed them home sends them back into the meat grinder. Mockingjay is about how politicians treat veterans. Katniss spends this film being shunted from propaganda shoot to propaganda shoot, and serves as President Coyne's mouthpiece, with Katniss ultimately realizing that Coyne doesn't truly care about her. She's just going to send more children to die, with Katniss feeling used and betrayed, just like a number of American vets. And finally in at number 1, The Revolutionary War. Posted to reddit by The Martian Manhunter, they state that back in 1775 the British Empire employed its mighty empire into North America and seek to take their colonies. The colonists were fed up with the empire and decided to attack with brute force, sparking a revolutionary war. I quote, In the Hunger Games the districts do this too. They are fed up with the capital and initiate war. It has been no Noted by Suzanne Collins that Pan Am occurs in North America, many years from present day. Now, what if Britain won that war? Would they decimate all 13 colonies? No. They would kill the signers of the Declaration of Independence, and then strike fear into the hearts of the remaining 12 colonies by killing one off. Britain would kill off the colony making the least amount of money, Georgia, which being the furthest south and thus farthest away from the capital, geographically matches up with District 13. Britain having gone through a large war with the rebellious colonists, would set up a small centre of command to regulate the colonies. This would be the Rockies and have a leader similar to the governors that Britain placed in Massachusetts and others before the revolution. This would be President Snow. Well, there we have it. What did you guys think of these theories? Were there any that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part 2. If you're enjoying the dark content we're doing, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss another beyond the screen vid. And until next time, see you later. Oh, <laughs> oh,